All right, guys, sorry for taking so long to get lesson two from the Rotary Swing Road Show to you guys. Been a little busy driving thousands and thousands of miles and moving into the trailer park with the RV for the next week. So now I have a chance to sit down and knock out these videos. So I hope you enjoy this one because this one is really, really important for golfers who lose power as they get older, especially. We start to see the same things over and over again and this trend that you're going to see here is extremely common and we're going to show you what we're going to do to fix it so as he goes back note how the head moves in front and the hip moves back so the hips moving away from the target this way and his head's moving this way this is no bueno so as you start to do this you can i want you to even try this feel this in your own swing or just while you're watching this video just stand up right now and if you're a right-handed golfer as you start to make a backswing, let your hips go to the right and your head go to the left, your head go toward the target. And you'll feel how weak and awkward this feels. But so many golfers do this because they're so dead set and paranoid of swaying and moving off the ball. They've read time and time again that you need to stay centered and don't move off the ball and so on and so forth, which I totally agree, but you gotta understand how to do that correctly. And because it's okay for your head to move, people, mistakenly try to stay so centered that they actually cause their head to go in the opposite direction and so as we go to the top we end up with the old dreaded reverse pivot here you see the left knee has kicked in here this is going to cause us problems as the hips gone over here we're in trouble it's a very weak and lacking of any coil to be able to get yourself back to the left so in this 30 minute lesson all i focused on was getting him to turn his body correctly. Remember, first step, an RC5 step, weight shift. If you don't shift your weight correctly, I don't care how pretty you look at the top of your swing or what the club face angle is or how much lag you have coming down, none of it matters. So the first thing I did is weight shift. Step two is what? Core rotation. If you're rotating your body correctly and shifting your weight correctly, the rest of this stuff is a piece of cake. So that's what we focused on here. So as he goes back now in his new swing, Look how much more coiled up he is. Now he obviously moved his head off the ball a little bit more than I wanted, but that's okay, it's first lesson. So, as we're here, which golfer would you rather be? This one with the knee all buckled in and angles here where we're gonna have a hard time getting everything back to address, but over here, look how little his knee's gotta to move to get back into the downswing. To make his weight shift back to the left, which is the crux of the golf swing for nearly every amateur golfer on the planet, weight shift back to the left, you want to make that as easy as possible. Now, this knee's got to come all the way back over here. Versus here, he's got to move a little bit. Notice how I kind of like to give analogies or visuals for people when they're practicing. And I always tell people, listen, when you're making a backswing, when you have this left knee collapsing like you see here, like I feel like John Madden, a telestrator. All right, this guy's going to go over here. This guy's going to go over here. So what I like to do is tell them to imagine you had a ball between your knees. And as you go back, that ball is obviously not going to compress very much, so you can't squeeze it together. Your knees can't come closer together, and they're not going to go further apart. Now, technically, your knees are going to move a little bit closer together, so it's just more of a visual. But you get the idea, and you can see the difference in the spacing here, how much more powerful and stable he looks. And, of course, we've gotten rid of that dreaded reverse pivot. We're coiled up behind the ball. So when you're losing power, you've got to get your body working correctly. And this is the first key. And that's what we focused on here in this 30 minute lesson was to get him in a powerful position. So then as he comes down, he has the ability to use his body and his trunk to produce power. But from here, he's just got a bunch of compensations to make. And it's a lot more work because he's got to move a lot more on this swing here on the left because his knee's got to go further. His hip is slid out. He's got to reverse his spine angle. All this stuff has got to try and happen in a short period of time, and it's just way inefficient. So when you're working on your swing, don't skip weight shift and core rotation. I know weight shift is not the sexiest thing in the golf swing, but it is the most important. So if you don't shift your weight correctly, nothing else is going to happen correctly. But if you do shift your weight correctly, you'll be amazed at how many other things automatically happen for you. So. This is a great example of how to get your body. You can see a lot of the drills that's on the website. You can visualize them here. Like imagine the necktie drill. Oh, that wasn't a very good line, but you get the idea. How do I delete that? There we go. So now the necktie, necktie is hanging off his chest, right on the inside of his knee here. The necktie would be draped across his belly. There's one visual. The laser beam knee drills. 
this right knee's point way off over here because he's let it straighten up and externally rotate too much. That makes it harder because now that right knee's got to do the opposite coming down. So it's great to see this, and of course, axis tilt here. So it's great to see this in the real world where you see somebody who makes a very common mistake and how easily and quickly it can be fixed just by focusing on the simple fundamentals of the RST 5-step system.